So recently, 10 people and got publicly executed in Heryeong, another border town. And nine people had a public a trial and sent to political prison camp. And all those people related 19 people sent to political prison camps with them. And I think that's where like Kim Jong-un is reaching right now, that he is reaching this break point. That people is not going to be able to tolerate this even longer because their life is on the line. And who can survive in that, in that country right now without anything coming from outside the country? while the regime is not providing anything to the people. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yemi Park. I'm a North Korean defector, human rights activist. I sometimes like today, uh, I've been talking to some podcasts and other things. It really made me, and also getting the news from North Korea. And being in these two different universe, and I always thought about myself as being a bridge between the free world and, and the hermit kingdom. And the news are so different. The, the reality that I see every day here is a, is a paradise. And the reality that my people are facing every single day is like absolute hell. And Sometimes like I have a hard time to like reconcile that difference. Like how is this even the same world? It's just like am I in this 21st century even? What century like am I in? So the news that I got from North Korea is a mass mobilization of like a public execution in March earlier this month. Uh, in recent years with the COVID, North Korea have kind of stopped executing people at once or together. They used to do that more in the past, but you know they have kind of like came uneasy on it because it was hard to raise more people, bring them in the same like you know stadium or market would be wouldn't be that safe. And I think Kim Jong Un like is really understanding right now. There are so many people who are not happy with the current system, and he's really trying his last. I think trying to show. How, what the consequences of not following the rule that he set up to his citizens to follow. So recently, 10 people and got publicly executed in Heryeong, another border town. And nine people had a public a trial and sent to political prison camp. And all those people related 19 people sent to political prison camps with them. So the number is going to be way bigger than that, the ones that total sent to prison camps. The reason why Kim Jong-un were executing these people is, again, I talked about in the last video how Kim Jong-un has been banning the smuggling with the China because he thinks the products that North Korean people bring might contain like COVID virus and he doesn't want that. And this is another thing about it. Like people <laughs> in North Korea, our citizens, they do not die from coronavirus. The chances of them killed by coronavirus is way, way lower than killed by starvation. Of course, the chances for Kim Jong Un to die from coronavirus is like higher because nothing else to kill him there, and that's why you know only the rich people can afford to have a complete lockdown, and the poor people cannot afford to have this insane lockdown that Kim Jong Un is forcing onto every citizen in North Korea. And this is like a why so upsetting to me. It's not like who wants to die from virus. Like we all want to be safe, but only when we have the privilege to be locked down. The people in North Korea they cannot survive without smuggling because, as I keep saying, the government salary do not even let them be alive in one day with that money. And everybody gotta break the rules to survive. So when this. The smugglers who are doing this business, they had to get help from the elite. Otherwise, how they on earth crossing these highly electrified wire fences and landmines going to China and bring what they from brought China is even shocking. They literally brought some rice, soy, um, soy oil, and like grocery materials from China because nothing was in the North Korean market. A lot of people don't understand, like when I go to like Costco or like Walmart in America, I just cannot believe how much stuff in there. But people really don't understand, like in North Korea countries like that, 
even with the money in your hand, if you go to stores and market, there's no stuff available to buy. And people who grew up in a country where they always had a supply of items, as long as they had money they could buy, they don't understand this. So North Koreans, even with money, for the even elites right now, they cannot find the basic grocery to survive. So the elites were making these uh, people to go to China and bringing them in their shoulders like soybean oil, like the rice, those things from China. And when they got caught, of course, regime was killing the people who were working for these elites, not the elites themselves. And this is even the, that's like what gets me even more upsetting that, you know, the ones actually like force these smugglers to go to China and buy the goods and bring them back to the elites, those ones who have been punished and not those who was elites who were taking advantage of this system and the people. Another part about this whole thing right now in North Korea, Kim Jong-un st started this like uh, anti-socialism I mean, socialism sentiment group, something like that. Like it's a besides you group buying Korean, so like anti, you know, uh, socialism, and they are the catchers literally. So these catchers from Pyongyang, they are only targeting the people who shows the anti -com communism and socialism sentiments, which is smuggling or going in the market and moving around or wearing jeans or watching forum information and those all of the things are considered to be anti I mean socialism in North Korea. These groups have unbelievable power to punish citizens. They don't need to have a trial. They can just kill whoever they want. They do absolute power from Kim Jong-un. So now these groups are set spreading around North Korea like you know parasites all over and catching people and eliminating people's freedom even more and oppressing more them. And I think you know what Kim Jong-un really needs to understand that like there is so much a regime can push their citizens, right? Like so much a human can take. <laughs> and of course like I cannot believe how long North Koreans were able to prop with this and survive through it and this is also like I keep saying humans are so adaptable and resilient that they are able to adapt and be resilient to survive for this long but at some point they're gonna be some breaking point and I think that's where like Kim Jong-un is reaching right now that he is reaching this break point that people is not gonna be able to tolerate this even longer because their life is on the line and who can survive in that in that country right now without anything coming from outside the country while the regime is not providing anything to the people. And this is like, I think uh, what, I think this is a perfect time for the international community to raise our voice. And I, I don't know, like, you know, the America is in the place right now even to think about other countries because a lot of people are so busy like thinking about their own country but it is true that like, I always think the humanity, the sentiment that we have towards humans, it's, it's so shocking to me, you know, like I, even in the age of this COVID, I meet tons of people who are so passionately fighting for animals, becoming a vegan and becoming a, you know, a vegetarian and putting so much effort to looking for a substitute protein for their diet and so they don't have to kill animals. And we do have spent so much energy to care about all these social causes. And when the countries, whenever I talk to people, there are 25 millions are being in the lockdown in the entire concentration camp. And what they're going through is like a modern day Holocaust. And people are saying, give me the excuse like, oh, like we got so many problems in America that we are so busy to think about other people's oppression. And their problems is like, what, literally? You know, of course, like there's real problems, I get that. But the thing is the problems that Americans got is not even comparable to what is like happening to North Korean people. You know, people like, I mean, that's why I, I get so frustrated. But I know that the people like you guys watching this video, 
I know that you care and you want to see the change in North Korea and I'm grateful that you are helping me to carry my message and spread, spreading the message and show the true face of Kim Jong-un and the, the regime to the rest of the world so we can somehow convince our world leaders that they, they, they should work on this issue. And because like, if we don't fight for human rights as a human beings, like I always wonder about this. Like people are, like fighting for animals, like like climate change, gender equality, like all of this, right? Think about the world. Like all of us are not free. Like all of us, our freedom taken away and oppressed. I know that animals not gonna fight for us. I know that robots not gonna fight for us. Who's left there to fight for us? So by fighting for human rights. It's not something we are doing the other people's favor. We're kind of buying an insurance that when we are not free, that we know that we have somebody left there to fight for our freedom and be our voice for us. And that is why we gotta care about human rights. We gotta fight for each other's freedom. So thank you guys for joining me in this fight. And thank you, please help me to spread this video and hit the like button and so the more people are aware what's happening to nursing people right now in this age of COVID. So be safe and I look forward to seeing you guys all next time.